cannot do. The Bible tells us he created everything there is. You know, a Christian is not an ordinary person. There are times we make the mistake of thinking that we are just believers who love Jesus. We are believers who just want to do good things. Sometimes we even think that since there are many religions in the world, like someone else is a Muslim and another one is a Buddhist, so are we Christians. But you have to understand Christianity is not a religion. When you get to studying the Bible, you will discover that beautiful truth. Christianity is not a religion. But we have been so misinformed. We think it's a religion. It's not. Christianity is the divine life at work in humanity. God in a man. That's Christianity. It's not a religion. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said, you must be born again. And when he said to be born again, he wasn't talking about turning over a new leaf. He wasn't talking about doing nice things, good, doing good things, doing righteous things. He meant that a man had to be recreated. He had to have a new spirit, a new life, not a change of ways. Doing the right things, having the acts of righteousness, they're all a result of the new life that you receive from Jesus. And when you receive Christ into your life, the next and greatest thing that should take place in your life is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You are not a Christian until you are anointed. You see, the very word Christ means the anointed one. And you cannot be a Christian without being anointed. The anointing is what makes the difference between you and a man of religion. When you are anointed by the Spirit of God, you begin living the supernatural life. See, true Christianity, authentic Christianity is living in the anointing. There are too many people who don't even understand what the anointing is. But every child of God ought to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's what makes you different. That's what makes you supernatural. In your daily walk, Jesus had to be anointed. Until Jesus was anointed of the Holy Spirit, he did not do one supernatural thing. He lived 30 years before he received that anointing to begin his ministry, which lasted only three years. He had to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus had to have it, you must have it too. Praise God. And if you have received the Holy Spirit, then you have the anointing. But not too many, not many Christians know what the anointing ought to do in their lives. Why do we get sick? Why are we defeated sometimes? Why do we get frustrated sometimes? Why do we fail sometimes in our lives? Because we ignore that one important subject, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If the anointing is on your life, you should never fail. If the anointing is on your life, you should never be frustrated. If the anointing is on your life, you should never be sick. If the anointing is on your life, you should never be poor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. You know, the anointing has to be fresh. It has to be fresh. There are people who used to be anointed, walking in the anointing long time ago, and they're not walking in that anointing anymore. But the anointing has to be fresh in your life. It's not for one day, it's not for five months, it's not for two years, it's for every day all your life. Can we read from Psalm 92, from verse 10? Have you found it? It says, but my horn, but my horn. Now, there are certain words that are used in scripture that are symbolic of certain truths. And in this portion of the Bible, we have a few of these words, and I'll try to explain them to you. Now, horn in scripture refers to power and authority. Okay? So here he says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. A unicorn, a wild ox. A wild ox. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. He's saying, you exalt my authority see says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn i shall be anointed 
with fresh oil. Now two things I'd like to bring to your notice in that very verse. Firstly, he says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. This time it says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Not spent oil, but fresh oil. How many of you know that you need to change the oil of your car for your engine to work properly from time to time? After a certain amount of rounds on your engine, maybe some, uh, maybe some 3,000 kilometers or so, you will have to change the engine, the, the, the engine oil in your car. You know that, don't you? Now, if you don't change it and the oil is spent, it becomes very light, then it will not be of sufficient protection for your engine anymore. And you could have problems with your car. So you have to have fresh oil. When you service the car, you have to change the oil. Is that right? So he says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. There is a fresh anointing that should be on your life regularly. Not a spent anointing. Now the second thing, the second thought for you to see in that same verse of the Bible is another shade of it in some of the other renderings. And it says, I shall be anointed afresh with oil. Praise God. In both ways it's referring to a fresh anointing, a new anointing. I shall be anointed afresh with oil. Anointed afresh. Tell somebody anointed afresh. Anointed afresh. Yes, it says, I shall be anointed afresh with oil. There is an anointing that should be on your life. Now let's look at this. Very, very important. Verse 10, But my horn shall thou wax out like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see my desire of my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Hallelujah. He's telling you what the anointing will do for you. Are you hearing me? He's telling you what the anointing will do for you. And I want you to observe the play of words by the Holy Ghost in this portion of the Bible. After you are anointed with fresh oil here in the 11th verse, it says, My eye also shall see. In other words, there's a revelation, there's a vision that comes to you. You can see. In this case, it says, My eye shall see my desire, my enemies. In other words, you can see the end. Of your adversary if you can see the end of your adversary you should see your own victory can you say amen which means the anointing will open your eyes to see you can see the future when you are anointed the future becomes clear to you then there is no more fear he says my ear shall hear did you see the next one my ear shall hear your ears are anointed to hear there's clarity Sometimes people say, well, I don't know whether God talked to me or whether it's my mind or whether somebody told me. They're not so sure whether or not God's talking to them. But when there's a fresh anointing in your life, it becomes clear to you whether God is talking to you. You hear quick. You hear clearly. Because there's a fresh anointing in your life. You wouldn't have to wonder, is God talking to me? It'll be easy for you to hear God. Hallelujah. Verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. The righteous is a man that is anointed to God. He says, shall flourish like the palm tree. That's prosperity, brother. Your life will begin to flourish. Hallelujah. The anointing causes your life to flourish. You will not live a dry life. Glory to God. No frustrations. You will not live a dry life. Your life will flourish by reason of the anointing. Praise God. Look at it. He says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. He's talking about growth. There will be growth in your life. First, there will be spiritual growth. Because when, when the anointing is functioning in you, everybody around you will take notice of you. There's a change in your life. There will be spiritual growth in your life. Your eyes have been anointed. Now you can see. Now you can hear clearly. Now your life is flourishing. Praise God. And there's growth. Oh, hallelujah. Look at the next one. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? They shall flourish in the courts of our God. They've been planted in the house of the Lord. See, the anointing plants you. The anointing establishes you in the house of God. 
you are established in the house of God. Do you realize that there are people who are not walking in the anointing and so they are not established in the house of God? What does that mean? You can't tell whether they are in the house of God or whether they are in the world. You can't tell where they belong. They have not been established by the anointing. The world doesn't know whether they belong to them. The church doesn't know whether they belong to them. They have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. Because they have not been anointed. Hallelujah. The anointing causes a change. The anointing causes a change. Now, I know I shall take care of that fellow quickly. Praise the Lord. The anointing establishes you. Tell somebody, the anointing will establish you. The anointing will establish you. Hallelujah. Let's look at the next one. They shall, oh boy, do I love this 14th verse. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. My goodness. They never get worn out. We don't wear out. Hallelujah. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Glory to God. They just keep going on. Ever productive. Ever bearing fruit. Even in old age. By the time you're 90, you're still strong in the Lord. You remember Moses? He was anointed. At the age of 120, the Bible tells us Moses' eyes were not dim. His physical stature was not abated. He was a strong man by reason of the anointing. That's what the anointing does for you. By the time you're 80, you're not going like this. At 80, you're standing. 90, you're still standing. 100, you're still standing. Glory to God. That's the work of the anointing. I can tell when I look at an old man, I can tell whether the anointing is functioning in him or not. Because if the anointing is functioning, he will not have one of those things they call old people's sickness. He can't have it. I'll show you in a moment. He can't have any of such things. God had to tell Moses, it's time to die. The guy wasn't ready. God told him, God said, get up the mountain and die. Go there and die. Come on. And when he got up there, God said, lie down. Die. (laughs) Hallelujah. David was anointed. A great, great man of God. Well anointed. And um, when he was about, see, as an old man, He walked in the spirit of God. He was the only king who crowned his own successor. Fantastic. The only king in the Bible who crowned his own successor. That's what the anointing does for you. Praise the Lord. Look at the next one. So he says, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Glory to God. To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no up unrighteousness in him he is my rock that means you're unshakable because you're founded on the rock hallelujah see what the anointing does in your life 